Okay, we're going to work with the fake data first um, before we start touching the real data. Um, so what we want to do is load the fake data, which I think if we look in the data set or the, the data folder is called Father Education. So we want to load this CSV file into R so that we can start doing stuff with it. So in this R Markdown file, I'm going to insert a new chunk, which is um, you can either use this menu here and click on this, this green button and say R chunk, or you should be getting more used to keyboard shortcuts at this point. You can press Command Option I or Control Alt I if you're on Windows, and it'll insert a new chunk for you. Um, we're going to load the, li the Tidyverse library. Um, because that has a whole bunch of functions in it, like ggplot and uh, dplyr stuff, so we can mutate and filter, um, so we can read CSV files, we can do a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll just load that um, for now. That, And we'll also do library broom, um, which you should also be familiar with at this point. This just converts model objects into data frames um, with set numbers of columns and rows, and it makes them a lot easier to work with. Um, if I click on the play button here, it will load those libraries. It'll also show a whole bunch of messages and warnings and just information. Um, I don't want those to show up when I knit this document because that's just tons of extra information. And so what I like to do is um, remove them. So here I can say warning equals false and message equals false. Um, you can type that by hand or you can click on the gear icon and uncheck show warnings and show messages. You can also name the chunk, which is good practice. Um, we can name this load stuff. So now we have a load stuff func or uh, chunk, and then we have stuff inside it, and it won't show any messages or warnings. If we click on play, it's gone. Great. Okay, so we want to load our education data, our fake education data, into R here so we can start doing stuff with it. So what we're going to do is um, do that with read CSV. So we're going to type ed fake because this is our fake data set. So we're going to name it ed fake just because. Um, I'm going to press option minus or alt minus to do the backwards arrow assignment um, operator here. And we're going to say read underscore CSV. And then we want to give it the path to the data set that has the, the fake data in it. So if we say data slash and then I'm just going to hit tab here. Um, and these are the three data sets in there. And it's father education. That's our fake data here. So now if I run this chunk, and if I look in the environment panel, I have a new data set with a thousand rows in it called ed fake. And if I click on it, there we go. We have wages, we have education, we have father's education. And just for fun, I give you the forbidden ability column that we can't actually measure, but we're pretending we can measure. Um, OK. So what we need to do now is before we run any two-stage least squares regressions, we need to make sure that father's education is a good instrument. And so the process we go through, if you remember from the slides, was this here. We want to check to see if the instrument is relevant first. Then we want to see if it meets the exclusion restriction or the exclusion assumption. Um, then we need to check to see if it's exogenous as an instrument, and then we can finally do the two-stage least squares thing. So the first thing we need to do is check for relevancy. So we want to see if father's education is correlated with your education or with a person's education. And the way we check this is by just running a regression. This is technically the first stage regression. Um, and we want to see if there is a significant relationship between the two, and we want to see if the F statistic is big because that means that the model itself explains lots of the variation in the outcome. So if we come back to our studio, we're going to um, make a section here called, uh, well, actually, because we're doing like three different instrumental variable things here, we'll just make a section here called education and wages fake with a first level heading. Okay, then a second level heading, we'll add that and say check assumptions. So this is the section where we'll check the three assumptions of instrumental variables. And we'll add a third level heading because we're going to check for relevancy first. And so in real life, this is where you'd actually explain stuff. You'd say, like, we want to see if there's a relationship between the instrument and the policy or father's 
education and education. And the, we also want f statistic to be big, like greater than 104. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we're going to insert a new chunk here, and we're going to see if there's a relationship between father's education and education. Um, we will just call this model first stage. You can call it whatever, but we're just going to call it first stage because it's technically the first stage. We're predicting um, your education based on father's education. So we're going to say first stage equals, so using that backwards arrow, which is option minus or alt minus, LM. And here we're going to say education. Oh, I don't remember what it's called. Let me look at the data set. It's called EDUC. Cool. So EDUC is explained by the instrument or father's education, which we called father EDUC. Cool. So father EDUC. The data is ed fake. And we want to actually see the results of this. We'll say tidy first stage. And we want to see the other diagnostics so we can check the F statistics. So we'll say glance first stage. So if I run this chunk now, we should see two different output sections here. If we look at the first one, we see that father's education has a positive relationship with regular education, which makes sense. Um, if we look at the significance of that, the p-value is tiny, um, which means it is significantly related to education. So the instrument looks relevant uh, from this perspective, where it does seem to have a strong relationship with father, uh, father's education, has a strong relationship with your education. If we look at the diagnostics here, R squared, who cares about that? We care about statistic here. This number needs to be bigger than 100-ish, 104. Um, 7,000 is definitely bigger than 104, so we can say pretty safely that this is pretty relevant as an instrument, um, because that's big. So we can say, this is relevant, yay. All right, so we checked for relevancy. Next, we need to check for exclusion, which well, we'll put this as a third level heading here so it matches um, our table of contents. We can actually click on this little um, orange section down here, and it'll show us our table of contents where we have our fake education wages, we're checking assumptions, and then there's relevancy, exclusion, et cetera. Um, actually, before we do the exclusion, let's actually visualize this um, because we can see the coefficient there. What does that even mean? Let's look at a picture. So let's insert a chunk here, and we're going to say ggplot. The data we're looking at is ed fake. We'll map some aesthetics. We'll say x is father ed duke, and y is ed duke. And then we want to say geom point. And let's run that and see what it looks like. There we go. That looks like a pretty good, strong relationship there. Um, we could add a linear model line to that just to show what the actual relationship is. So we do that with geom smooth. If we just do geom smooth, it'll choose some way of smoothing it. It might choose low S. Um, yeah, this chose general additive model, neat. So it could be curvy potentially. We want to tell it to actually be just a regular linear model. So we can say method equals LM. So now if we run that, there we go. Cool. That looks pretty relevant. So we're done with relevance. Hooray. Let's go on to exclusion. This is harder to do with stats. The whole idea here with exclusion is, let's go back to the slides here. Our goal here is we are trying to prove, let's find a DAG, here it is. So relevance means education, father's education is related to education. That's good and strong, good. Um, for exclusion, we need to say that father's education is related to earnings, but only because of education. Um, we can kind of get at that statistically if we look at the relationship between father's education and earnings. Maybe that's positive, maybe it's negative, maybe there's some sort of relationship, and that's good if there is. But that's not enough to talk about this isolated pathway here. That just has to be a story where you can't think of any other nodes that might lead to earnings other than education. 
So we can kind of potentially do it. So let's add, we, let's draw a picture. We'll say ggplot ed fake. And then we'll say AES on the x-axis here. We want to look at the relationship between father's education and wages. So we'll say father eduk. And then our Y is wage, but what did I call it? It's just wage singular. So Y equals wage. And then we'll add geom point. And we'll also add geom smooth with um, a linear model. So let method equals LM. So if we look at this, cool. As father's education goes up, your wage goes up too. Neat. That means there is a relationship between the instrument and the outcome, which we want. This tells us nothing about exclusivity. This tells us nothing about like father's education is causing these changes in wages only because of your education. And there's not really a statsy, mathy way of doing that. Now we just have to tell a story. And you spend multiple pages in your report saying, this instrument really is exclusive because we say so for all of these reasons. Um, and make sure there are good reasons. And so that's how you, you check exclusivity here. Um, so we'll t say lots of stuff. This is exclusive. Okay, the last thing we need to check, if we come back to the slides here. Um, oh, if you ever wanna do this exploded view, press O on the slides and it'll show you an overview of the slides, which is great. Um, so we checked relevancy, checked exclusion. Now we need to check for exogeneity which in this case means no other arrows are going into father's education from these unmeasured things. There's no statsy way of measuring that. We just have to tell a good story again. And you have to say that none of the unmeasured confounders cause the instrument. Um, good luck with that. It's probably not the case with father's education, but go with it. So you'll have a section here where you say exogeneity, and you'll explain why this is exogenous. Probably isn't, but we're going to go with it. OK, and that is how you check all of the background details of your instrument to make sure that it works as an instrumental variable. Um, so that we did step one, two, and step three.